Hello, listening people. Hello, Anima. Uh, Is that it? You, you're done. <laughs> you still got to keep going with whatever the heck that was. It's it's because this is getting ahead of ourselves better than the guest this episode. The last time we had this guest on, I also did like a long drawn out hello. So well, yeah. I'm Ryan, one of your hosts, and you are very embarrassed. But my real name is Bartek. Hello, Bartek, and we are spin Polish, likingly because we are always spitting. And yes, we both happen to be Polish. Isn't that correct, Bartek? Are we Polish? See, the yes was a foreshadowed answer to my question. Ah, I get it. It's very smart. You're yes. very smart. But is, are you as smart as our show, Unappreciated Masterpieces? See, and now I just foreshadowed an answer to your question. Oh, no. Okay. So, um, we're doing our show, Unappreciated Masterpieces, the show in which we provide a feature-length audio commentary track for the movies that seemingly don't deserve a commentary track. And we say seemingly because we disagree. They deserve commentary. They deserve analysis. They deserve praise and love and recognition. And, of course, appreciation. Because they are unappreciated. These are the movies that society has said, hey, put that in the dark. And we say, no, we've got a torch. We're shining it at it. It's in the corner going... (laughs) At being recognized. But eventually, you take it out of the darkness, you give it a bath, and it's an Oscar-worthy movie. And it turns out it's photosynthetic, so the shadows was not good for it. No, it was actually very bad for it. You know, we need it to breed. But Bartek... Breed with the sun. I need to know what the movie is that we're covering, because I'm unaware until you tell me the title. I need to know too. Oh, okay. But only I so know the title. So let's ask the guest. Uh, guest? No. no, no, you tell me. The movie that we are doing in this episode... <laughs> I'm going to already tell you're very proud. You've got a big <laughs> smile on your face. No, it's... Be- it's... I'll explain. Uh, the movie is called Ja Tvarjel. Say it again? Ja Tvarjel. It's Ja, comma, Tvarjel. Ja t- No, no. Ja. ja. T- no, no, there's no T. Ja. Oh, sorry. The second word begins with a T. Ja, comma, Tvarjel. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. You're like, no. No, you're going Ja. Yeah, and then I was like, Ja. T-, and then you're like, no, 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 T. So, so it's something. What was the last bit of it? Uh, tvarjel. Tvarjel. Tvar gel. Fart gel. That's exactly what I'm hearing. Fart gel. Yeah, fart gel. There's no second T. Far gel. It's far away gel. It's, it's, it's gel so that's put in a location far away. Far gel. See, I'm hearing it's. Well, it begins over. with a T, so. It's carrying out fart gel. We're watching the movie Fart Gel. It'd be more ah. accurate for you to say T far gel or something. To far gel. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a voyage. Yeah, it sounds like a Star Trek Voyager character. So this is ah, it's old Chakotay and his girlfriend Tafajel. So the title <laughs> translates to "Me, tough guy." <laughs> <laughs> so we're watching what, like Dirty Harry three? No, me, tough guy. No, we're watching me, tough guy. Oh, meet Dave's sequel, meet tough guy. <laughs> No, no, you're carrying the tea again. <laughs> it's me tough guy. I don't know what you were saying now. <laughs> me tough guy. Me tough guy. Yeah, yeah. You, it's like me, it's like a response. I don't know. It sounds like you're saying the word meat and then tough guy. You're combining it too quickly for me. Me tough guy. But you're saying it like me tough guy. Me tough guy. Now that's getting better. But we need a tough guest guy. Who's the guest that's tough? Bro, <laughs> our guest is you, tough guy, Mark Pentamark. In fact, that's me, tough guy. You're tough guy. You, tough me guy. Tough. He's tough guy. See, I thought he was saying me, tough guy. Me, tough guy. Me, tough guy. Like, oh, me, tough is sticking out. Hey, guys. my brother, me, tough guy. <laughs> Oy vey. <laughs> so, guys, we're doing me tough guy. <laughs> me tough guy. <laughs> Why is he don't know what we're doing anymore? Oh, right. Movie. I haven't even said the actual title. <laughs> I didn't even mention that I don't understand you because I don't speak Polish, but I'm just, forget it. I'm just here for the fart gel, honestly. Fart gel away! I, actually, I, I completely didn't notice that we didn't, we didn't mention the title in actual. No, no, that is the title. title. So, get your copy of me tough guy. It's from... the man! The man? The man. We have permission to do this? 
Yes, we do. I've I've got the recording right on YouTube. We do? Okay, cool, yes. cool. Because I don't want to do this movie without permission. Yes, we have permission from the one, the only tough guy. Okay, cool. So, Mark, Russell, you're here. You're, we're up to Pentamark. That's yes. how many marks for people who don't know their Pentas? Yes, we had Pentamark on last time too, but he survived. He survived. For people that don't know, every time we have a certain Mark Russell on the show, uh, he as we say in the business, disappears and gets replaced. <laughs> or dies. Except last time. Except for last time where... So he's back. There was a twist where the original Mark was not in fact the original, but the second Mark. So technically this is a Penta Mark, but the one above. Right? That would be correct, right? Bartek? He would be one more then. No, I think... If we, we kill the second Mark in the first... if he, He didn't even die in the first episode, he just left. The second Mark in the first episode was pretend to be the real Mark and then got replaced with what we thought was the second Mark but was in fact the third Mark. And then the third Mark died and got... And you know what I mean? It just goes on and on. I know. I think... I so think, I think he's one above Penta. So no, I don't, I don't think, I think he, I'm right. I don't think I he's Mark to the Power 4. I think Mark to the Power 4 died at some point. Like before the episode no, of No, I'm not Mark saying... I'm saying he's no, I, I know, Mark 6. I know what you're... S- I can't ask that question. My memory is a five. Time. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm right. He's Mark Six. What do we call the Six Mark? Hexa. Hexa Mark. Yeah, there we I go. I thought you caught up on the mythology. <laughs> so Hexa Mark's here. Sorry about confusing with that silly old Penta Mark. What a prick, right? I stabbed him real good. So it was a good stabbing. Mark, we're watching the man. You you know that we all have a legal copy of this. Everyone in the world has their legal copy of this. Oh yeah, there. yeah. It was passed down to me by my. You know, former self. I thought you were going to say the man. <laughs> because you guys at home should have a copy because I've got a copy. We're going to do a ca- I'm going to do a countdown. Not we're going to. It says me. Mm-hmm. I only trust me with this responsibility. I'm going to go down from three so wait, I can't to count. one and say play. No, you can't count. I'll do it in Polish for the international Uh sense. And I'm going to say play. you got to press play with the movie. You should have a copy. I have a copy. We'll be lined up, hopefully, as I speak about the movie. So get ready. Just you? Just me. <laughs> Just you talk so about I'm not I'm, You guys can hum in the background. <laughs> Like, okay. provide right. white noise. Mm. Mm. Not now. I have to do the countdown, you idiot. Okay, get ready. Three, Chim- two, wow. one, yeah, then- play. Mm. You didn't do the noise for play. You didn't say the word for play. I only said I'd count down. Uh... No, you don't hum. <laughs> no, I'm giving my opinion. Oh, I love mm. New Line Cinema. Jeez, you ruined it. You, you stepped over the line, Ryan. I'm on the line. There was an implication. You're off the line. In fact, go to Detroit. You're off the case. So, great great self-portrait there next to the mirror. How do you know really... itself? Well, did you see those fucking eyebrows on it? Well, Huge. I mean, Huge. I would say as that... As big as Eugene Levy's eyebrows. I would almost. Say, I would say that if you're going to draw his eyebrows, you have to be looking at them. And I don't see any method in this room for how to look at one's eyebrows. <laughs> Obviously, the reflection of his glasses. Duh. Yeah, but the glasses are reflecting off it. the mirror, so it's going to be a reflection of the mirror. Well, he's, what mirror? That's just a second Eugene Levy standing in the room. They're just looking at each other and mirroring each other, like in the three, you, like you in, know, the, in the Marx Brothers. You know how there's that like topic of like, is it gay if you have sex with a clone of yourself? Or yeah, or, or is it incest? Or is it incest? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's also so gay. Does it? <laughs> yeah. Does it? <laughs> like, you just really, oh yeah, that's it. Incest. It's also does gay it, incest. Does yeah. it? Does it count as a self-portrait if you're drawing your clone? Well, yeah, that is interesting. That is actually interesting. If you name your clone a different name, then no. But what if the clone doesn't want to be renamed? What if you're the clone? Well, then you... Well, Mark is the expert on clones, so... He is. Exactly. Not this one. The prime Mark was, but he's dead now. Yeah. So, so um, what i got to say about this is there's this also online argument around of... Um, and it, I want to know where you guys fall on it. Um, do you think you're 100% related to your dad? What's what's the semantics that would argue no? You're fifty percent. You're fifty percent related. Oh, okay. So it's it's the trick of like oh, hundred percent probability. What do but, you mean? Well, if you're asking me what's the probability that I'm related to my dad, I would no, say... No, I'm 100%. talking about you are 50% related to your dad and 50% related to your mum. Because if you're 100% related to your dad, you are your dad. Or yeah, but I think the wording is the confusing part. 
that's why there's an online argument about it, but like, that's why people have this division. But like, well, then I stand just... on the fact that you're fifty percent related to your dad and fifty percent related to your mum because you are not in fact those people, right? I think your yeah. wording is very confusing. I get what he means. He, he's like, if you were rela- I like, 100% no, I get, I get it. Like, say you got two your parents dad instead of one, your dad, so you have you to fifty-fifty it, but. Like, it sounds like you're asking, you know, do I actually think that's my real dad? <laughs> yeah. And you'd say, I yes, make, 100%. I didn't make this. This is the internet. But you're the you're the authority on it. Yeah, you're you know? the one bringing it here, Ryan. Well, you, I'm Soz. And I can only bring you I my... I said Soz. I guess you so did say nice. Soz. Yeah, I'll, I'll drop it. <laughs> when did we start that? You, when you brought up how Soz was very disingenuous. I think you were apologizing to a guest or something. Oh, yeah, Soz. So, guys, what is our history with... The man, the movie, not the man, you know, the societal figure that is the police. Because I don't want to know Mark's history with the police. I know he's done some shady shit. He's no, no, smiling no, no. because he no, knows no, no, I'm no, right. That, that was Mark Cube. Why do you think I started the whole cloning thing? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, so it's Mark, you know what I love? There'll be a reveal in one of these episodes that none of these have been actually clones of Mark, but just Mark with different haircuts. Or, or, or different glasses. Or different it's a glasses. twist of that we're just joking around until it's the same one. And no, it's just I don't think it's no, no, like, that's, I don't that's think actually, that's actually the most ludicrous thing you've said, said. I don't think it's the sort of thing you can joke about, though. Like, yeah, it's jokes not funny. It's not I funny. crossed the line this time. You See, it's your wording Wait, 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 wait. Really, I know, it was wait, the wording Hold on, hold on. There's something, really there's something you haven't considered, though, Ryan. I've considered No, 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 no. You haven't considered this. What? I'm Soz. Oh, you're Soz? Yeah. Oh, well, that's okay then. Our history with the film, you asked. My history is that I had not heard of this film until we did our episode on Big Stan, where in that film, there is a part where David Carradine uh, farts and M. Everett Walsh reacts, and uh, I can't remember if it was you or Chris, our guest in that episode, or both, were comparing it to a scene in this film, The Man, and Ryan, you very energetically said, we will do this on the show... And because our guest Chris wanted to say something, he said, yes, yes, it will be on the show. <laughs> and we, we acknowledge that as us getting permission. So this is us, uh, you know, following up on us getting permission. Ah, fantastic. Mark, what about you? Big history with the man, the well, movie? see, when you invited me on this episode, I thought we were watching Fart Gel. <laughs> Which, you know... But it was actually Fart Gel. <laughs> no, 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 it was Fart Gel. He thought Fart Gel. Yeah. He, he speaks and, with you know, his Western tongue. And so when we started watching this, I don't know, it was a bit disappointing, honestly. I mean, it wasn't what I was hoping for. I mean, for. we did get fart gel in this, but was it the fart gel we wanted? Or the fart gel we deserved. Yeah, the one we needed, yeah. I didn't see much gel, actually. Really? Exactly. What do you think Eugene ha- Eugene Levy's hair is made <laughs> out of? Eugene Harry? <laughs> he is, though. <laughs> He's a hairy man. He is. He's, he, you know, he, he could put you to shame, Bartek. Does he have a lot of body hair? Does it all go to his eyebrows? No, dude, he has a lot of hair everywhere. Mm. Have you not seen the American Pie movies? I've only seen some of them. All right. You haven't seen him in them. I th- isn't he in all of them? Yeah, but well, you've said probably you've seen, seen yeah. some of them. I think so I've that, seen might, that wording could indicate that you've only seen some of a film of all of them. No, I've so seen... you could have technically <laughs> seen 25% of each film, every... and that wording could indicate that I've that's I've seen true. every single shot that doesn't have him in it. No, I've seen two full of the films. But... You know, you could honestly watch... Uh, you could accidentally watch one of the movies and not see the shots with him in them, because they're only in like five minutes of each movie. <laughs> He's, un- he's only mm. really an inconsequential character. And, and one of the ones I've seen was a spin-off, but I think he was in it. I mean, he has to be. Yeah. He's, he's, and he doesn't even have a name. He's just Jim's dad, right? I think. Maybe. He doesn't have a name. He's just the dad. I know the main guy wasn't in the spin-off one. No. It was like Stifler's cousin or something. <laughs> so, I've seen this movie before. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was in the era in which DVDs were new, and my parents were like, let's buy DVDs. I like Samuel L. Jackson. I like Eugene Levy. This will be a win. Um, a little bit of foreshadowing here to Captain America. See, Captain America uses a uh, garbage can's lid as a shield, and uh, Nick Fury is head of the uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. organization. He's played by Samuel L. Jackson, and in Winter Soldier 2, they introduce the character of Falcon, who's played by Anthony Mackie here, who's getting hit with the shield, you see? This is all kind of... Actually, this is a post credit scene exactly. that was left prequel. on the cutting room floor of Iron Man. 
this whole movie would have been the post credit scene instead, but they thought, eh, it might be a bit too long. And who is Eugene Levy playing this Marvel universe? Oh, dude, dude, if you want me to really peg what character he should have played? Mm-hmm. He should have played the Jeff Goldblum character in uh, Thor Ragnarok, like the, mm. the, the, the master, the grand master. Yeah. He should have been him. I would have loved it if he was him. That's actually my genuine answer. That, that, or Thanos. That would have been great. <laughs> I'm here to collect the Infinity Gems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to collect the Infinity Gems. Get out of my way. <laughs> and he's just like smiling and he's killing and his everyone. his teeth are so white. Oh, oh, and his glasses are thick. <laughs> Almost as thick as the real Thanos' booty. You know, a lot of people were comparing... This that... movie to Thanos' ass. I agree. Well, they were comparing mm-hmm. Thanos to, I think, Hank Hill. And Hank Hill has glasses, so... Uh, oh, wait, Thanos to Hank Hill? Oh, no, it was Homer. I'm sorry. I was going to say, like, Hank Hill has a flat ass. There's a whole episode of... Well, I wasn't talking about the ass. I was talking about Well, the well we're talking about Thanos' it's a big, juicy ass that... You've heard the theory, right? So that's where the fart joke comes from. No, I don't listen to Marvel stuff. So people think Ant-Man should crawl, shrink down and crawl up Thanos' ass and then expand Mm -hmm. to kill him. Yeah. That's the, how you should defeat Thanos. Mm -hmm. And, And Paul Rudd is like being nice about it, but you can see that he's really annoyed when people ask him in interviews if in the next movie he's going to crawl up Thanos' asshole well, and many, become many, huge. Well, how many universities has this theory gone through? Universities? Yeah. I think all of them, man. Harvard. Oh, okay, I'm surprised I haven't heard of it. You know the movie Legally Blonde, mm-hmm. where she goes to Harvard? That was actually her court case. She's like, I think Paul Rudd needs to go up his ass. Um, This guy, believe it or not, is not Newman from Seinfeld. I didn't think he was. Big surprise, not him. I, I know you didn't think it, but there are some people out there who do. I do. It wasn't Wayne Knight. Can we comment on the best hairstyle ever, which is Anthony Mackie's sideburns? <laughs> <laughs> on his bald head? I barely noticed them. Oh, oh, that's what he wanted you to know, not notice. <laughs> <laughs> they're, just, they're like, you know, in games when they give the shadow there for def- definition of cheekbones? Mm, yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. So, I love it in games when you go to a hairdresser and you can get longer hair than you came in with. Oh, yeah. You, you're talking about Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Yeah, San Andreas especially. Oh, that's how my hairdresser does it. Yeah, they give him long hair. The, the, the camera In fact, pen. they keep the hair that he cut from last time and just smush it back on his head. The camera, like... They re-stitch it in, actually. The camera's placed in a spot so that when the hairdresser goes in between you and the camera and then moves away, you have a different look. Guys, we're being introduced to our antagonist of the movie, USA Today. Uh, and also, not Sting. There's a lot of people in this movie who is, surprise, surprise, not people. Well, he is a musician, though. This guy? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Luke Goss. Let's wait two hours until we get to my review, the review from IMDb. <laughs> is someone on IMDb saying he's Sting? No, no, no. They didn't confuse him with anyone. They know who... Trust me, Ryan. This reviewer knows who this guy is. <laughs> because they are, in fact, him. Uh, let's... Well, look. So, wait a moment. Ourselves. He's not Sting, and he's also not Ed Skrine. If you had to make a Pokemon Evolution thing, it would go Ed Skrine, this guy, then Sting. That's how it would work. You've seen Dune, right? The movie Dune? No. You haven't seen the movie Dune? Okay, in the movie Dune, Sting plays, like, the handsome son to, like, the gross fat... Oh, yeah, the Harkonnen. Yeah, he plays the handsome son to that. It was supposed to be David Bowie originally, but David, David didn't want to do it, so they're like, Ah, Sting! Sting! Like how Sting was supposed to be Jareth the Goblin King, but then they went, ah, let's get David Bowie instead. Yeah. It's always David Bowie and Sting competing for acting roles, I guess. I would have loved to see Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels with David Bowie as, as the dad instead of Sting. That would have mm. been great. Um, now, Marcus and Bartekis. Wait, you the dad guys... Locks, that was Vinnie Jones, wasn't it? No, he wasn't the main character's father. Oh, Okay. The one who owned the bar? Right, right. That's Sting. My mistake. I'll the one it. at the end who's sitting in the car and he's like, you can walk home. I was thinking, okay, I was thinking of the guy who had his son following the whole film. Oh, Vinnie Jones? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I would have liked if the movie of Lockstock was just casually about Sting and, and the main character is the son, but it's just like Sting's just there in every single shot. <laughs> and it's like, so that I could be right. Like, oh, it's about this dad whose son's following him. Yeah, so what I was going to ask you two, you haven't seen the movie, 
hadn't heard of the movie other than you, Bartek, from me. It's what been two was, years since I heard what it. Was you, what were you expecting from it, especially when you saw the main two leads? Because those two guys are well-known character actors, so you kind of get an understanding of what you're going to get into when you see Sam Jackson in it. You're like, oh, he's going to be a bad motherfucker. Yeah, for the longest time, I only knew the things about this film were... The only things I knew were, it's called The Man... And you in the episode, Big Stan, you were calling it the man starring Eugene Levy. So I definitely knew Eugene Levy was in it. Um and that there was a fart at some point. Eventually when I did look up the poster and I saw it was Samuel L. Jackson and Eugene Levy, I thought, Oh, this is a bit intriguing. I've uh, never thought to put them together. No, no one thought to do it again. And little did I know, over a dozen years ago, because this film's from two thousand five, I believe, two thousand penta, they were in a buddy film together i guess you can call it buddy cop film. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's the old midnight run type movie mm. yeah I, I guess not really buddy cop buddy and s- criminal what do they call it again s something c what? cooperating suspects, suspect who's cooperating with investigation yeah 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 um, swc yeah midnight run yeah so <laughs> 48 Ma- hours Mark, what about you? What did you think when you were getting into this? Well, honestly, I th- I was expecting like a gay romantic comedy, mm-hmm. um, which is where the fart gel comes into it. The fart gel, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, gel. like uh, you know, um, Eugene <laughs> Levy. Is so like I a... just have to point out one of my favorite gags that's happened there was like, why are they calling me the Turk? Just look at yourself, and he opens up the the you know the little mirror, and you hear Turkish music plays, and Eugene Levy just looks like accepting, like, <laughs> yeah, I do look Turkish. <laughs> Go on, you were saying you were expecting fart gel? Yeah, fart gel, lots of fart jokes, lots of gay jokes, you know. I mean, you do get some fart jokes. Exactly. And you do get some... So it did live up to some of the expectations. You do get some queer inference jokes there. Yeah. So you were very proud and happy. Bartek's looking at me Ooh, stunned. Me, I was proud and happy? No, I was looking at Mark, but then I looked at you, and you just looked at me like a dead-eyed puppy looking <laughs> for food, but I, also I you to, were too dead by that point to, re- to I, eat it. I was trying to remember the gay jokes. Ah, uh, well, there's the whole bitch sequence. That's right. Uh, th- all three of them. Yeah. And then the whole sequence in which, um, you know, Eugene Levy is gets real physically close to Sam Jackson, and Sam Jackson does the not gaze, where he's like, ooh, get away. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, right, the, the hug at the end. And the hug at the end. So right. a bunch of that stuff. Also, and he feels up the bad guy. And he fills up the bad guy's cock, and the guy's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not Born lucky. Born lucky, <laughs> which is actually really great. Great moment here. He's taking a mental picture, and he does like a little blink, like that's like the flag, <laughs> like the, <laughs> the shutter. Yeah. yeah. Um, this movie's insanely brilliant, of course. For the people who are not aware, I grew up with this movie, so I'm aware. Oh, you did. This movie is great. It's about the man known as Eugene Levy, is just your you know your normal dental hygienist supplier, and he's going to a convention in Detroit, I do believe. And he Mm -hmm. accidentally bungles into a police sting operation, I guess, of some local gun runners who have killed a policeman and stolen some police-issued guns. Yeah. And they think that Eugene Levy is this criminal mastermind guy that has a bunch of money and they want to buy guns from him. And Sam Jackson's supposed to be the guy, but, oh, Eugene just bought the wrong paper. And and then it's a, you know, cat and mouse game of convincing Eugene Levy not to run away and work with, you know, the old chalk and cheese buddy cop thing where it's like Eugene Levy's the straight, nerdy, you know, white collar, you know, guy. And, you know, Sam Jackson's your rough and tumble, you know, blue collar kind of gangster cop, hard bitten no real morality yeah, to like him. Hard-ass cop, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and um, you know, and they combine their skills to take down the bad guys. It's not Lethal Weapon, though. Because Lethal Weapon, it was about a black guy who's too old for this shit and one crazy Mel Gibson. See, different. Completely different, Mark. Did Lethal Weapon have a homeless guy? Yeah, his name was Joe Pesci, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> he just lives in the back of that car. It's quite funny, though. Sam Jackson does a lot of these kind of comedies and real movies of this. So, to give a bit of perspective, he did a Lethal Weapon parody movie called Loaded Weapon, which is great if you have not seen it. It's got Tim Curry as the villain, and Tim Curry's whole thing is he dresses up all the time, and in the opening scene he goes to kill Whoopi Goldberg, and he dresses up as uh, a Girl Scout. 
but he still has a full beard. Tim Curry? Yeah. Okay. And he's in this little school, like, a uh, uh, scout's outfit, and he's just like, oh, Wilde Disco! And he's German. And he's knocking at the door, and she looks like the, the peephole, and it's just him with a big evil grin with a beard, and fake pigtails and all that. And he's like, Wilde Disco! And then Whoopi opens up, and it's it, that's a great movie, it's Sam Jackson's play. That's great, yeah. And, and it's Sam Jackson and um, Charlie Sheen's brother. Joe Est- uh, Emilio Estevez. Emilio Estevez is the Mel Gibson type and Sam Jackson's, you know, the Myrtle type. So, and, you know, then Sam Jackson does real stuff like the, the Shaft. He does Shaft. And then there's a new version of Shaft that he's doing. Mm. You can't say Shaft without singing it because that's the law. He also does Lakeview Terrace. Yeah, Lakeview Terrace. And uh, recently, My Bodyguards, My, Hit- My Hitman's Bodyguard with Ryan Reynolds. And this, like, he is not afraid of doing serious versions of this kind of thing and comedy versions of this type of thing. What did you guys think of the comedic stylings of Sam Jackson in this? Because Sam Jackson, even in serious movies, does have a comedy flair, but this is him doing straight-out comedy. Were you laughing? Crying Mm. from laughter? Well, I thought at times it was trying to be a comedy, but... But then you were crying too much when they went to the ballet? I yeah, agree. it was it was too beautiful. It was I like you know like I said romance, the like dramatic romance. They're gay and they can't be together. Oh, everything. so it's a romance. Yeah. Ro the man's. Yeah, yeah. Fajal. <laughs> Fajal. <laughs> Me tough guy. So what about you, Biotech? Were you enthralled by the comedic stylings of Sam Jackson? I thought that Samuel L. Jackson, you know, he he does what he always does. But he always does it well. No one else can do it like him. No, they really can't. He just... He's always a lot of fun to watch. I I can't think of, like, anything that he's done that I do not like. Like, I I guess you could... Like the Star Wars prequel. Like, I was going to say, yeah, you could argue Mace Windu, but, you know... I will, so there you go. He's on, he's he's whatever, whatever, but... I, uh, yeah... Those those are the lowest rungs of his because he's I guess not really doing what he normally does. Emoting, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just have to process. I just love when you think about his career and how he's been in like everything. Like, do, do you remember? Have you seen Coming to America? Mm-hmm. And he's just in that. Yeah, in one scene. And you remember him? Yeah. And then you know he's in Goodfellas and he's just like in everything, just casually in them. It's like that joke about, like, there's that movie poster joke where it's like, you're watching a movie, then halfway through, Christopher Walken turns up, and you're like, oh my god, it's him. That's Sam Jackson. It's like, oh, there he is. He's just in everything. Snakes on a plane, He's obviously. He's done everything from lead character to first black guy to die in a film. In any film ever? Well, no, in a film. Oh, uh, <laughs> what film? I can't remember the title, but it's about a shark, I think. Deep... Oh, uh, yes. Um, uh, I can't remember. It's a stupid shark movie. Yeah, I think yeah. he's giving like a speech He's giving like this excellent something. speech where it's like, and you think because he's Sam Jackson, he's going to live, but then he gets eaten immediately while giving this speech about like how they're going to band together and fight this thing. And it's like this epic Sam Jackson speech that only he could give, and then he gets eaten. Deep Blue Sea. That's it. Yeah. Where LL Cool J wins because he believes in Jesus. <laughs> I haven't seen this one, but I should now. <laughs> he survives because he has a talking parrot <laughs> and believes in Jesus and he's the cook. Can we remake that film but have Sam J- ULL Jackson be the main guy? No, no, he should be the bird. Can we just like go back to how you said that? It's like Sam UL. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, yeah. are you L? <laughs> I call, yeah, I call him Samuel L. Jackson and I make it a point to be like L. Like, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. different one. And one of my friends was just like, I thought you were just saying Samuel weird. And I'm like, no, the elves, his middle name stands for Leroy. Yeah, yeah sometimes you kind of want to slur that middle L, like Samuel L. Jackson. But then it just sounds like Samuel L. Yeah. Samuel. Like Samuel L. Hey, it's my good friend Mark Uel. Yes. So, guys. He does, um in the film, he does the watch your head gag with the, the police car and he bumps his head there. Mm. Um, Obviously, this isn't the same type of role. This was voice acting, but he does the same thing in San Andreas, GTA San Andreas. <sighs> He's your main Was he in Saved by the Bell? By any chance? Did Sam I wish, Jackson I turn wish up he... as Screech's dad? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Did he turn up you know as what, Screech's right? dad? I actually don't, I don't Saved think... by the Bell. I'd love if he turned up as Screech's father. I actually don't think we ever see Screech's father, so well, the possibility is there. It's, it, you know, look, I'm not... Sa- look, 
I was at a screenwriter for Saved by the Bell, but I am going to say right now that it's in canon that Samuel Jackson, the actor, is Screech's dad in Saved by the Bell. It's canon now. So there's going to be, there was a secret cut episode where they're like, Screech, your dad is Samuel L. Jackson? Yeah. Oh, you know what? It's like those Arthur episodes where Matt Damon turns well, you know up what? and he's still an animal for some reason. Well, you know that Screech's first name is Samuel, so he'd be <laughs> yeah. like Sammy Jr. Davis? No, Jackson. <laughs> Keep up, Ryan. We're talking about Sam Jackson. Uh, there's a lot of people in this movie. Let's give a shout out to um, this guy here, the internal. Oh, I thought you meant Gene Levy. No, the internal <laughs> investigation guy. Mark and I know him very fondly from Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. He plays Albert, uh, who's also FBI. He's an absolute dick. But yep. uh, a lot of people know him from everybody's favorite movie, Robocop. Of course. He's the guy who made Robocop and then has the best death ever. Ever, ever, ever. Or one of them. That when Red from that 70s show comes in and he's like, the guy's got all these prostitutes and he's, he, Red comes in and he's just like loading up his silencer on his pistol and he's just like, bitches, leave. <laughs> and they're like, okay. And they're like, and they say to the main guy, like the guy, see you later. And he's like, no, you're not going <laughs> to see him later. And he shoots him in the legs and then he like... Like, seductively, like, bites the pin off of a grenade and puts it on the dining room table and walks away. It's just so good. So good. Robocop, one of the best movies ever made. But is it as good as Eugene Levy's performance in this movie? No. He does make this movie. When was the last time we saw Eugene? Was it Man of the Man, the Man of the House? Bringing down the house, sorry? Bringing down the house? Yeah, on this show, we've definitely seen him in Like Mike, and we've seen him in Bringing Down the House. I don't think we've seen him since. We haven't had him as a voice. As a voice? Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't had him appear as a voice in any of the animated movies we've done. Can you imagine we him as... Done many, but... Can you imagine him as the boss baby? Oh, God. Uh, hey, it's <laughs> me. Hey, it's me, and I'm here being a baby. What do you want? I'd, I'd need... Here is my card. <laughs> I'd need boss baby to have the eyebrows. <laughs> no, no, they're nothing but eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a blank face but eyebrows so what are we familiar with Eugene I mean obviously you are Bartek from Like Mike but other things like American Pie is the big thing but anything else not really not that I know ha- really nothing for you no, you haven't seen this so. man's face before he's familiar I can't say like what I've seen though he's he's great he's one of the big comedy legends he he's was very funny. He's a very interesting guy career wise because you know he, he he plays a lot of different roles, but we all know him for the one type of role he plays, which is this, you know, like dweeb. this ho- dweeby, wholesome kind of guy in like stressful who situations. Who can be also inappropriate. Yeah, he's know. very inappropriate in bringing down the house. And and also American Dad. I mean, in American Pie. I like, uh, with him, he started out doing different things. So, for instance, he's in National Lampoon's Vacation as, like, the sleazy car salesman who gives Griswold his car. Mm. And he's really sleazy and kind of weird in that. And then, like, other movies I've seen him play wholesome and stuff. And, like, and then other movies he's, like, this dweeby guy. And then other movies he's, like, the antagonist. Like the, uh, what are those Steve Martin movies where he has a bunch of kids? Cheaper by the Dozen. He's like the antagonistic... Oh, I've seen the first one, but it was so long ago. I, don't I, I think he's in the first or second one as like another family with a dozen kids. And he's like antagonistic about it. And okay. Eugene Levy's one of those guys where we all know him because he's got these big old eyebrows, the big old glasses, and he's got that big old voice of his that and, no one else can do. And that smile. And it is the smile. I think what makes him work so well in this movie is he is such white bread. <laughs> like he's just so lame and so awkward. He's very out of his element. But you know what I like about it? Now, now, Mark, you're used to seeing this in some things. You can have a character that's so innocent and pure that they become annoying mm. because of how innocent and pure they are. I feel like Eugene does a good job in this movie of yeah, not definitely. becoming too annoying for the audience. He's the right amount of annoying because that's what he has exactly. to be. He feels like how you would feel in this situation. Like, Uh, Mark got handcuffed to a policeman's car one time when they left the keys in, and he decided to go for a little drive, and and guess what? He was, Mark was better driving handcuffed on the other side of the car with just one foot than he is driving in his own car with with all the accessibility. It was fear, you know, the adrenaline. And every time someone confronted Mark, he called them tough guy. And that's how Mark got his license, driving like that handcuffed. (laughs) Exactly. Like, here you go. 
took his his mug shot was his licensed photo. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can get it out if you want to say it. Yeah, sure. Give me it. Yeah, put it up yeah. to the microphone. Oh, oh my God, Mark. I didn't realize that you had a mohawk back then. Interesting. You know, there, were, there, were, there were dark days, you know, back in like, you know, old Melbourne. Old Melbourne town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> back in ye old day. I thought it was going to be, uh, this was a great little little gag there. See, she grabbed him. That's the gag. Mm. Lartic. That's the gag. I don't, I don't understand. This but, was the one part of the movie I didn't understand. You see, it was a dropped romantic subplot. Uh-huh. Yeah, where they're trying to convince him he's straight. But, but what did she grab? What did she grab? Him. His what? bullet wounds. She stuck her finger in the in bullet the wound. bullet wound, and so, that's why he went. And then, like, Ow! We, we don't see it, but after he walks out, she looks at. She's like, "Hmm, spicy." Because the sauce. It's oh, okay. So it wasn't. It wasn't to stop the bleeding. She was hungry. Oh, <laughs> obviously she was fat. I mean, come on, that's the fucking joke, Mark. Like, Jesus. I understand now. And then this here joke is uh, male on male rape inference. I mean, we all love that gag. It's so classic. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen Big Stan. I mean, that's why we watch this movie, because of Big Stan. <laughs> oh, right. It wasn't that you were comparing the farts. It was the male rape jokes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, it also goes into the gay jokes. Oh, I really... I... You really didn't notice the gay jokes, huh? I was so busy being a me tough guy. I thought you were going to say aroused. <laughs> I was too busy having a massive homosexual erection that I just Bar-se- didn't as notice. A, as it. opposed to a heterosexual Bar-se- erection. Your pants back well, on. There, well, there are differences, I guess. One is like an physical? erection. Well, yeah, obviously one bends one way and the other doesn't. Uh, yep, but nailed that one like Jesus. <laughs> Should have right. probably said one bats in a different direction. No, bend. No, Ben's right. But then you got the 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 malafor of the you know you batting for the other team. Oh, that one works too. But also the penis can have a bend in a certain direction. I know. That's so, what I thought you were going for. See, it, that's yeah. what I went for. And Bartek's like, you know what? No, I want to go with a batting analogy here. Mm-hmm. Can we please use it? Hey guys, do you like drinking? Take a drink every time you notice Sam Jackson's left eyeball is bloodshot. Mm. Just just enjoy. Yeah. Too bad this is a podcast. I mean. You can point it out every time, if you like. Well, you brought it up. But now I'm giving the responsibility there to we go. you. There's some bloodshot. And I'm calling you tough guy. I there am a go. tough guy. Me, tough guy. <laughs> but who's the fart child? That's the question. You. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> disappointment me, f- me fart gel I love it. it's like ah the two of you have a responsibility but who's the fart gel I guess it's not me the only one left with nothing <laughs> well, yeah. I don't expect this to bounce back at me somehow in some way shape or form what it did well, I'm considering, shocked considering I'm I've shocked and appalled like six times I sort of do expect the worst to happen yeah you're right Hexamark How's he going to die in this episode? Gonna, like, well, we're going to find out eventually that, you know, some way, some shape or form, he's going to catch fire. But I don't want to give that away well, you know, yet. Each, each clone is like sort of uh, has less you know, structural integrity. I thought you were going to say more flammable. It's like when you photocopy something again and again and it just sort of yeah. decays. So, yeah. yes, more flammable. That's the literal plot line of a cloning movie called Multiplicity with Michael Keaton. Where his clones start cloning themselves and eventually they have like this retarded clone who becomes a pizza delivery guy and rides around on bicycles and throws pizzas at doors like a newspaper boy. That's a movie. Yeah. With Michael Keaton. That's what uh, Mark 8's job is. <laughs> <laughs> well, not even after Mark 7. <laughs> Hold on a but, moment. But like they exist in the future. Can you I know, tell you something um, amusing? I like amusing. Go ahead. I watched this last night with my fiance. And sh- sh- when we got up to the ballerina scene, so notice we're getting this scene. We got the ballerina scene. My my fiance went, "Oh, they got a different little girl than the scene earlier." And I just went, "No, no, it's the same girl." And she just pointed at the screen. My my fiance pointed at the screen and said, "This little girl has a thin face, and the other one didn't." And I'm like, right. "No, it's because her hair's tied up." And then my fiance looked at me right in the eyes and just went, "Maybe," and sat down. <laughs> That was the retort. It Maybe was, it was so dramatic it needed to stand. So there's me no up conclusion. In the first place. It's not 100. <laughs> percent No, exactly, exactly. There's no conclusion. So if you're that little girl or little girls, let us know. We need to know if there was more than one of you. You know. And little. Maybe there were twins, and they both wanted to be included. <laughs> I like to be included. She grew up and became Michelle Obama. She did. I like to be included. Don't you like to be included, Bartek? 
Mm-hmm. Disclusion mm-hmm. is bullying. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you. So this movie is a comedy of, you know, mismatched characters. Um, we've seen a bunch of those. I mean, Bartek, one of your, like, between us, one of our favourite movies of that type is Planes, Trains and Automobiles. I was a, I was going to ask you if you thought that this film reminded you of that film. I mean, every movie reminds me of Planes, Trains and Automobiles, and I often compare it to well, yeah, that. because we, you know, have a black and white lead. Yeah, well... well I've seen Are the there jerk. any black characters in Planes, Trains and Automobiles? I've seen The Jerk. One of them is clearly black. <laughs> Steve Martin in The Jerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that gag, though, where he thought he's like, they told him that his black was going to grow <laughs> when he got older. Because he's in The Jerk, he's adopted by this full on black family, and he doesn't realize he's adopted, even though he's oh, white. Oh, and right. he, they told him that the black would grow as he got older. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, that movie's fucking great. <laughs> He invents this device, Mark, for glasses, where it was like, you know, don't you hate getting smudges on your glasses? Exactly, yes. Or hate how your glasses fall off your face because when you take them off, you pull them off and it kind of stretches that out. Where Mm -hmm. he puts like this little hook device on the... um, Bridge of your nose. The bridge of your nose. But and then you know you take it off via that so it doesn't ruin your glasses. Doesn't that sound like a great idea? Yeah. Well, then in the end he gets sued because it makes people go cross-eyed because their eyes get drawn oh. to it. <laughs> that's clever. And I like that. yeah, yeah, it's in a movie called The Jerk. That's one of the dumbest movies ever in a good way. That's one of the clever aspects of it. <laughs> um, now, Bartek, with this movie, there's a lot of comedy. Who did you find the funnier of the two? And what what moment in the film really stood out to you as a laugh-out-loud, rip-roaring moment of comedy genius? I think I have to give it to Eugene Levy this time. Wow. I know, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just letting you get, get, go speak, but you're like, i, I got to linger on that wow of yours, right? It sounded like you were going to follow up on your wow. Okay, go on. Like, wow, I thought you were going to say Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, now I thought you were going to say Miguel Ferreira, but go on. Luke Goss. Um, yeah, I, I think Eugene Levy was very funny in this. I think also because I'm less familiar with him. And as I said, Samuel L. Jackson's doing what he does best. And, you know, I've seen it before and he does it well. Um, but Eugene Levy as, as the as the the weaker one, mm. the, the, the more Flanders. awkward one, the more out of his element one. And like I said, he he was playing it very wholesome for a lot of this film, and it contrasted there with when he had to play it a bit more serious, like when he was at the negotiation in the bar, and he was like, "Oh, you want this money? Give it. I, I can get more money." Those kind of scenes there. Um, I yeah, I thought I thought he was definitely the funnier one, and definitely those moments of contrast uh, elevated that, and also yeah, just the plain scenes where he's like. You know, giving him the advice of, oh, if you're going to say fuck, follow it up with... Uh, crying out loud. Crying out loud, yeah. Fuck, crying out loud. Which, I, when he was bringing that up, he's like, I got a trick. I'm like, oh, how lame is this going to be? But then it was actually pretty genuine. And it was pretty apl- good. And it was applied within, like, five minutes. And then never done again. That was a bit of a downer, but... Rules no. of three. There was, But there was a punchline, so I there can forgive it. There was a punchline, so it's okay. Uh, was that your favorite little funny moment, or funny like your standout funny moment of the movie? There were there were a lot, but like in general, I just found him to be overall funny. I really found myself laughing hysterically at Eugene Levy having to, um, I guess, do the whole speech in which he calls Sam Jackson a bitch. <laughs> and make Sam Jackson say that he's a bitch and slap him in the face and treat him like garbage. See, that's a scene you can point at and say that they're either one's the funniest one. Cause I think it's for me Eugene Levy, just oh, the de- voice. Definitely it's Eugene, the voice. Definitely Eugene Levy, but Sam Jackson, just like the look on his yeah. face, the, the, the silence. Just Eugene Levy's nasal voice being like, <laughs> Come here, bitch. He's my bitch. He's my bitch. <laughs> I'm curious to hear what Mark thinks, because he's a bit iffy on if this is a comedy, right? He was too aroused. I was. You know. So um, should we ask him which one aroused him more? Yeah, well, yeah, which one definitely... aroused you more? I'll give you this. One of them didn't wear a shirt in one scene. I know. So that was a bit of a surprise, because like, they get in the car, and then just suddenly Samuel L. Jackson is just like naked, maybe, yeah. <laughs> in the pool. He's wearing Speedos. 
but you know, you, it's, it's a bit unclear. Yeah. And you know, you sort of just like look just to see if you'll get a glimpse, you know? <laughs> so there was that scene. We saw his tattoos at one point. We saw them in a lot, actually, in the movie. Yeah. yeah. So there was that scene. And there's like the bar scene, which I did like. I like um, sort of just like the, oh, I'm the man now. <laughs> and like, I'm just going to give my like gentle sort of uh, speech. speech. <laughs> which was nice, actually. Yeah. It was a good callback. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was clever. So you were turned on by Sam Jackson, but, but... And then, like, the you know, the, the patting down and, like, ooh, I was born lucky. Oh, yeah. S- not Sting saying that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Bartek's laughing because he knows what this review later on is going to contain. Um, look, this movie is also got some nice little action set pieces, like this moment here where, you know, I like this idea of can you drive like this? And Eugene Levy says... Yes, I can. You and can. I've does. tried. Yeah, but you know, he he. But well, Mark's not just tried. He's done. <laughs> He's evaded and then got a license for it. Yeah, I agree. Evaded the cops. What cops? Popos? No way, Jose. Um, do you think it's a bummer that we don't make movies like this anymore? It is sad. You know, everything's yeah. just you know too polished nowadays. No, oh, thank you. Spit and polish. Hmm. Thank you. Bartek, do you feel the tragedy of not having movies like this? I do. I I really do. I felt that this film was a lot of fun, and uh, again, similar to when we did Cop Out, a lot of people really do not like this film for some reason. (sighs) Because they're racists. Exactly. And and it's... And homophobic. They don't like Turkish people. And, And again, this is another case where I can understand if generally the movie's not the greatest, then you think it's bad or not worth your time, but... People were full on going to one out of ten reviews for this film. Oh, wow! I and wow. I I don't understand it. Like a lot of people were saying, you know, the script's bad. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson was given nothing to do, but uh, excuse he, me, he does a lot. He does a lot. He the, beats the, a he, guy up. He puts his car up a guy's bum. Let's let's <laughs> <laughs> let's put aside that was the arousing scene. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got your ass on me, booty, or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, let's put aside if this film is you know ten out of ten or one out of ten. Would we not at least say it's serviceable? It has you know it has a script. I don't think numbers it has, even matter. It has yeah. a script. It has three arcs. It it has character development. It fulfills the genre of buddy film. Like, what's what's one out of ten about it? Exactly, mother fathers. Yeah, I censored it there. Mother like, fathers, mother for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, mother for crying out loud. Why am I forgetting this? Jesus. Because you've got Alzheimer's, old man. Wake we- up, Mark. Give me the fart gel to put in his brain. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> He's going to go back from ba- baby to full <laughs> to grown adult. From baby to teenager to podcast. Sorry, host. sorry. From baby. So <laughs> this isn't Spice World. Are you sure Sam Jackson didn't say that was like, last episode? Are you sure Sam Jackson isn't Spice? Uh, Scary Spice's cousin. They literally say that. I was about to say, yeah. They do. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they talk about Spice Girls in this, and he says, "Oh, you're meant to be Scary Spice." That is true. They do say this. And he's like, yeah, motherfucker! That was in the climax, right? In the warehouse? Yeah. Yeah. I I climaxed. Well, no, Mark did. We laughed. Several times. I I laughed. I climaxed. Oh, so I'm laugh, Mark's climax, and and you're both. both. So we're like the Pokemon evolution again. You're you're the Squirtle. He's the um, one that isn't Blastoise. Wartortle. The least interesting one. And I'm Blastoise. Yeah. Wow. There are... You know, there, there is... Oh, uh, there are War Turtle stands. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. Yeah, there are people listening now going, "How dare he insult War Turtle?" No, no, because because the I'm the a example, War Turtle. Because the example we were giving was like, "I'm A, he's B, and then you're A B." That implies that B loses A, but then gets it back. And I was saying that there are some Pokemon where like the middle evolutions, like the the odd one out in terms of abilities. Like, there's one in the third generation which is a sloth. Uh, evolution three Pokemon, right? And they have a a negative gimmick in which the first and third evolution every second turn they just loaf around, you know, sleep. Ah. But then the middle one's this like crazy violent one that doesn't have that negative, right? Yeah, it's weird. Mm. I like that. That's interesting. But is it as good as police brutality played for jokes? I always love 
good police brutality. I do too. I mean... I don't think we have enough of it nowadays. See, they're doing it interesting here because, in fact, it's Eugene Levy who's being the nice one here, you see, which is... Not what you expect yeah, from a police brutality. Usually, it's white scene. people beating up the black people. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, I well, do, I well do in agree. this movie, they do set up that he looks Turkish. <laughs> I, I do agree that, um, yeah, he's being the nice one in this thing. But I could, I could definitely see like a film from Booty's perspective. That's the character's <laughs> name, by the way, Booty. Um, <laughs> from Booty's perspective, a film from Booty's perspective where he doesn't know who Eugene Levy is, and he's just this guy that's here now. He might seem like a sort of, like, yes man to Samuel L. Jackson. It's like he's in on this, you know, shakedown kind of thing. Right. So, like, there, maybe there is something, like, threatening. Like, who is this guy? Why is he doing everything this guy's saying? Does he know more than what's going on? I do like in movies and Who's shows. Who's he talking to? Yeah. Movies and shows that they always have, like, that, that low-level street crim that's always, like, man, I don't want to talk to you, but then does. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, definitely. I love those characters. They're <laughs> always great. They're always, like, scum of the earth. I mean, he just knocked out his gold tooth, man. Mm. Poor Anthony Mackie doesn't have his gold tooth no more. We better mm. tweet at him and be like, did did Sam replace it? Well, or it's, what? It's I think okay. he swallowed it, so we just had to wait for it to come out. <sighs> well, it's but then like, it'll be brown. Look, guys, too. he may have lost his tooth, but at least he still has his life. <laughs> for now. What? Well, you see, unfortunately, um, Thanos snapped his fingers. Spoiler alert for the end of Infinity War, and um, Falcon didn't make it. Is Josh Brolin in this film? Yeah. No, we already went through it. Eugene Levy's in this film. He played Thanos. Oh, my mistake. Yes, your mistake. Who's Josh Brolin, then? Josh Brolin is the guy from No Country for Old Men. Oh, no, he's the guy from Like Mike. Yes, of course. An American Pie. He plays Little Bow Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's lost. He's like, what's I a don't know what's what a you're what's about. a Little Bow Wow? The joke- is it a- any relation to a big Bow Wow? That's my question. <laughs> well, no, like, he's just rela- called Bow Wow he, now, right? He's just called Bow Wow now. When he was a kid, he was called Little Bow Wow. Now he's just Bow Wow. It's like Snoop Dogg. How Snoop Dogg started as Snoop Doggy Dog, and then Snoop Doggy, then Snoop Dogg, then he became Snoop Lion. At one point, he was just Snoop. And now he's back to Snoop Dogg. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Let me know, Snoop Dogg. I know you're playing Spyro and listening. With this Spyro drone that <laughs> looks <Spyro>. traumatized. <laughs> well, I would be if I was given to Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Via drone. Via drone. He also has like some family feud quiz show now, Snoop Dogg. Oh, right on. That's what he would say. Ryan, did you know that this guy's not Wayne Knight? I'm actually really surprised actually that that Samuel man L. Jackson. is not Wayne Knight. Like, I looked at him and said, hey, is that Newman? Or is that Don from Third Rock from the Sun? Because that's what his character's name was in Third Rock from the Sun. Ah, I see. Don the policeman. Yeah, but it was actually Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, far out, really? <laughs> what was that? That was a nod. A clicking nod sound. Well, you see, the but listening can't, people can't... Exactly. Mark, Mark's way ahead of me, yeah. yeah we, they can't, can't hear see. me nodding, so I have to make a sound effect. Yeah, it sounds like you're speaking clicky language exactly. from African tribes. <laughs> no, 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 you sound like you're trying to attract sheep. <laughs> really, it sounds more like what Polish people do to cats to attract them. What do Polish people do to cats to attract him? <laughs> Just Polish people? I mean, I've only, is, I've only, only, I've only, only seen my, I've only seen my only family Only Polish do people do that to what cats. Do, what do French people do then? They go, ooh la la. Okay. And the cats have intrigued. Ooh la la, I put catnip on my penis. And then they're like, oh. Meow. That's not catnip, that's fart gel. No, that's strictly Polish. You know that, Bartek. Only the Poles have fart gel. That's true. Oh, we're coming up to so the fire, much in this room. Well, he ate red meat, and as everybody knows, red meat gives Eugene Levy gas. Mark, as someone who eats meat when you are given it via your family, and other times you are vegetarian... Well, that's because it's homegrown meat. It's different. <laughs> Is it, though? It's still an animal. Well, yeah, but it's... it's There's only it's a bunch of about... vegetarians listening now going, oh, I've lost so much respect for Mark. It's not like the matter of being an animal. It's about, you know, the cruelty of the system. Oh, is that why? Yes. But if there was no cruelty in the system, you'd be draining, like, drinking their blood? Not necessarily. So, yes. The system's unsustainable. It's, it's like, you know, there's a lot of environmental issues oh, around. Oh, fuck, I gave you know. Mark a soapbox. 
All right, I'm taking it now. away. <laughs> so when you eat meat again, does it give you farts? No. Why not? Because I have perfect self-control. I can just hold them in endlessly. But it does make your stomach go oopsie. No. You should. Why not? I don't know. Why, Mark? Is your stomach like cast iron? Yeah. You've seen me. I can eat almost anything. That is true. Mark, one time when I used to live with him, asked me if he could still be allowed to drink expired juice that was like months and months and months expired. Oh, I see where you're going with this, Ryan. And then he drank it, and he was like, ooh. And you, and, you, and you told him, no, a person can't do that. And Mark said, I didn't say can a person. I said, can I do it? And then That's I was exactly like, you're not a person. You're annoying. You're right. Do it. Wow. It was actually one of those times where I just went, no. And he just kept following me around asking me why I, he couldn't and right. I was like you've clearly made up your mind that you want to Dude, Ryan. but you want my approval on this Ryan, it's much. like the time he came up to me he was like Ryan my clothes are still wet is it alright if I put them in the oven to dry Ryan, you and I said no and then he goes what about the microwave I'm like no Dude, Ryan, for real though you called him annoying I think you should sauce for that what did I say you called him annoying Oh, Mark, Mark, he's right. I, I should say I'm not soz about that. I'm, I'm not soz. This is the edgiest episode wow. we've ever done, Ryan. Jesus. The drama, the controversy. You're actively not sozzing. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I said I'm not, though. Like I said the word soz, right, but well, just applied the word not in front of I'm it. so shocked we missed the fart. Well, do you like fart? No, we're not. We haven't missed the quintessential fart, have we? Where no, they're driving. We and he has oh, to get wait, out of yes, the car. I think we literally, one. just as I said, we missed Fuck, it. well, we didn't miss the one with the I nuns. That's, yeah, true, that's, that's true, that's, that's true. That's true. The, main the one. one where they kill a bunch of nuns. Yeah. Oh, actually, he's going to fart when he leaves the yeah. car, too. So, you know, part two. Part two of three. Part third. Or is it part two of four? I can't remember how many times he does farties in this movie. I know it's definitely in the car, the scene just passed, he's going to do a quick one when he leaves, and then there's going to be the, the mm. lift one. The lifty. Fair enough. So, guys, the thing I've got to ask was, did you expect Luke Goss to be Kane? No. No. <laughs> I was happy you made like a I was very shocked. <laughs> there was no shaking your head noise from Mark. No, that's too similar. Yeah, do, do, yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yes, it's and no, it's no. Do, that's do, not do, even do, the do. noise you made. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't open my mouth. I was like, <laughs> or something. <laughs> you didn't even do it like that. It was like <laughs> solid clunk, 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 clunk. But like you didn't do any, like you didn't go you're like you just went. <laughs> and that's why I was like, what the fuck was that? Was what the guess. fuck was that? Ryan, did you expect him to be him? Who, Luke Goss to be Kane? Yes. Well, I was too busy thinking he was fucking Sting for most of the movie, if I'm honest with you. I was like, who's this Sting-looking guy? And then he wasn't Sting. That's when I was shocked. I mean, he's wearing a white shirt like Sting, Sting would. Sting would wear a white shirt, I'm just saying. Who's Mr. Sting would? I knew you were going to do that, and that's why I kept talking, so that by the time you got there, I was like, hey, we've already passed that, Bartek. We've already passed Stingwood. Stingwood Max. All right, Ryan, we're over this. Are we on the edge now? Of our seats. <laughs> okay, I'm on the edge of my seat. When watching this movie, what I did appreciate most about it was it did follow the nice three-act structure and character arcs. You know, that's... Something that a lot of these comedy movies just don't do now. Like, Eugene Levy's playing a type. Yes, he's playing a Eugene Levy type. But this type has a script to play off of and a development to make. Unlike when Will Ferrell plays his man-child type and they're just like, and he's Sherlock Holmes. And he's a race car driver. And the lesson at the end of it is, and we shove in morals now in the last five minutes to make it feel like the movie had morals in the first place. This movie has it throughout. Like, Eugene Levy slowly learns to become a badass. But not too much where at the end he's now a completely different person. He's more, just more assertive in his lifestyle. And Sam Jackson's learned to become more of a prick. Isn't that yeah, right? Yeah, that was, that, that was all he needed to do. A, f a slightly friendlier, but more of a prick. I mean, at the beginning of the movie, he didn't force him to have a cavity search, search and at the end he did, so... 
But Would at least you he's consider that friendlier or he's more reconnected. antagonistic? He's reconnected with his daughter, and that's what counts. Oh, because of Eugene Levy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, you know, cavities, it's a bit intimate. I mean, Sam Jackson not doing the cavities search, so... Yeah, but it's it's kind of like, you know, wingman kind of thing. Right? No, his name's Falcon in the uh, Captain America movie. No, but he's like being a wingman for him. Yeah, yeah. Falcon does have wings and is a man. Is he the man? No, or that's is, Sam Jackson. Or is he a me tough guy? Me tough guy? Is there a comma? Yes. There is. It's not just like one, 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 one son. Me tough guy? Yeah, ya. Yeah, me is, tough guy? Which I know in German, ya yeah, is like yes, but in Polish, ya yeah, is me. No. Oh, me. Yeah. So What's yes in Polish? Uh, as in, like, an answer to a question. Like, yes, it's tuck. And the other variant of yes? As in yes, that is, like... <laughs> you made it sound like there was some other yes. I mean, there's, there's like... What's can... the other yes? Please explain. Are you 50% related to your dad while at it? Tuck, oh, tuck. <laughs> tuck, tuck. I don't know, you can shorten it like ta, yeah. Like, a bit more casual. That's more of a yeah. Yeah, a bit more casual. So, so okay, like I just that was weird though. You're like, like as in the answering correct? Yes. No, I want the fancy royal yes, in which it's more. <laughs> so, what's no? Yeah, which I know in Russian it's like net, but you just get rid of the t. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds like a so yeah we, kind of thing. Hey, we say we say that in English too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, but it kind of sounds like yeah. No, we're saying... I've, I've said this on the podcast before, but it's a common thing in my household. Yeah. That, like, when we answer yeah, we have to then follow up with, were you saying yeah or yeah? So you're saying that the Polish language is stupid? Well, no. It's Hashtag just a, fact, stupid. It's just a problem that comes up when you're bilingual Polish and English. Oh, but, you know, your brother doesn't speak any Polish, so why does he have to worry? Well, he he understands Polish. Oh, so the, the problem but still he stands. never has to say nie. Yeah. He just has to say yes and no. That's true, but he does, <laughs> but he does not. But Bartek, is it what kind of truth is it? Is it like the royal truth or like or is it the truth in like an answer the answer the question? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, he know he knows words, some words. He can I, say know, yes or I no. know words too. You know, <laughs> hope so. In Polish, I mean, yeah, I know that one. Is that yeah or nie? See, yeah, that, this is exactly the thing that happens. <laughs> no, I just told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you uh, being a, a yeah? This is the rest of the podcast. Uh, yeah. You being a thirties gangster? When you watch the nineteen sixties Batman and it has the penguin and he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, he's just saying <laughs> he's, no. He's really not happy. <laughs> he's saying no a lot. <laughs> he's saying no, 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 Batman. No, 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 no. You're gonna die. No, all, no, no. All penguins, they just do not. Penguins. That's right, penguins. All of them, they do not want. He gives them an eye. In Penguins. Po- in Polish, it's pingvin. Pingvin. And I grew up only saying the Polish word, so when I switched to English, I'd mix it sometimes. I thought you were, grew up just watching Pingu, and you're like, that's how it's pronounced, right? Penguin. That didn't help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, I thought that was French. Pingu. Pingu. I thought it was they were speaking French. Mm. I, I thought, what's Newt Newt mean in French? Is that no? And now you're French master. Yes, fuck me, because fuck me. They're horny penguins. <laughs> He's a child. Well, no, they're, gonna, they're not giving consent. Do you remember there's that one episode of Pingu where he cries because the kettle's boiling and the phone's ringing and he doesn't know which one to pick up first? He's so autistic. He just, it's just, you know, it's the sensation. He starts crying instead. I remember, it's a sensation over remember there was an episode where he had a nightmare and it weirded me out. I remember there's the episode in which he has to look after his younger brother who's an egg. And, he's like, and the egg is animated to do that like old fashioned animation where it's always like bobbing up and down. <laughs> <laughs> and he's made it an egg. <laughs> and he's like jumping around the house to try to catch it. Classic Pingu material. Which did you prefer, Pingu or Tintin? Pingu. I really? Lo- I never watched Ooh. Tintin. Really? You look like fucking Tintin. Do I? Put your hair up at a little, little point and you will. My hair doesn't do that. It will if you'd make it. Oh my god, it's Tintin! <laughs> I watched the Polish dub of Tintin growing up. Oh, but still, my my question still stands. I think I definitely watched more Tintin, so I probably like that more. But thinking back, I remember a little bit more Pingu. But neither of them are as good as My Best Friend is an Alien, so that's the end of that conversation. You don't exactly. remember, you remember that one? No. Where there's like this little boy who was purple, and he had black spiky hair and a light bulb sticking out of his head. No. That was the alien boy, and he wore a cape. 
No? I, Come back I, to I me, Ryan, like when you watch Bolecky Lolek. Like, like, off the top of your head. You're just, like, making this up as you go now. <laughs> no, that's literally the show. I don't believe you. Ryan, yeah, Polish, children, Polish children grew up with Bolecky Lolek. And, and his father was played by the guy who plays Death in Supernatural. That's like, is this real? That's a real show. My my best friend's an alien. I've literally been saying that I grew up with Polish cartoons, so I don't know. That's not a cartoon. It's a real. Yeah, live but I grew up with. Ca- I grew up with cartoons, not this live action show. You you, you never grew up with any live action shows. Well, there were oh some, well, okay, you heard that. But I didn't watch that one, and I was talking about cartoons. Well, I'm talking about kids shows in general. Well, that's probably why I didn't see it then, because if it wasn't animated, I didn't care. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I you stand. fucking suck. I couldn't stand live. Well, action do you shows. remember old Tom? Yeah, you do the cat I remember with the, the missing eyeball and the, the fish books. skeleton that he had as a friend. Well, that, that was a show of that, so you're missing out. I don't remember the show. Maybe Mark grew up with the Polish cartoon I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Huh. Oh no, I was saying yeah actually. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Well, you sh- you shook your head there, so I know you were saying yeah. No, you could say yeah it's, with shaking your head. It's an Indian yes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then you're being a troll, and you're not a troll. You're a very kind and empathetic person. I didn't shake my head, like, to and from. I shook it, like, like I pointed my head to my shoulder, that, that kind of, like, sideward tilt, like, yeah. yeah. Or, no, yeah. but you gave me the facial expression of, like, disgust, and then you killed oh, someone cause I while looked doing it. Because I looked at you. Made me want to throw up. Yeah, but Oh, you... guys, the bitch scene's I, here. It's, it's now, this out. is a great audition monologue. You know, this whole sequence of you do his lines as well as an audition monologue. and then... Well, I was about to say, monologue's not really the right word. Well, he did have a little monologue where he was like, He's my bitch. Come over here, bitch. It's a little short. I didn't hear you, bitch. It... Well, yeah, audition no, 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 monologues no, no, only need me, to be like a let, minute. Let me finish. Let me finish. The quantity might be a bit low, but the quality through the roof. Some might say it's but bringing outside. down the house. Some might. Some might I say wouldn't. it's the man. Well, it's the Truman Show where they're always technically inside. Oh, of course. Everything's a Truman Show. So, it's a Mark's getting really world. turned on by seeing Eugene Levy's wet suit. Mm-hmm. Like, it's <laughs> it's a suit that's wet, not like a wet suit, isn't it? Well, you you can see it is a wet. suit that has been put in some in, water. In the part that, like, connects with the water, you can see some wet suit outside of the water. Oh, yeah, because he had to walk. Yeah. So, you can get excited by that little section of his body. Yeah, but also, Sam Jackson's got some interesting tattoos on his body. Are, are these tattoos for the character or tattoos of Sa- Sam Jackson? I don't know what Sam Jackson's like body has on it. Like, Does he have a guy stabbing a lion to death with a spear on his back no, in real life? It he's, got his, surprise he's got his favorite Polish cartoon characters tattooed on him. Which or are? Like Hebrew on his chest. <laughs> Hebrew. Why the fuck does he have Hebrew on his chest? Is that, is that not Hebrew on his chest? Is it, Are there words on his chest? There's symbols on his chest. Did you not pay attention, Bartek? Right yeah. there. Ah, uh, yes, you're right. It's a Zodiac killer. <laughs> it's his signature. It's It's Sam Jackson. Motherfucker and the Zodiac! <laughs> I don't actually really watch that movie. If if it was Zodiac or the David Fincher movie, but at the end, instead of it implying it's John Carroll Lynch, it's just Sam Jackson. He's like, motherfucker! And then it just ends. And it's like, the text comes up, people still think to this day, Sam Jackson is the Zodiac killer. You know that theory that they think Ted Cruz is the Zodiac killer? I think I have <laughs> He looks exactly one. like the uh-huh. illustration. Oh God. He looks exactly like the illustration of the Zodiac oh, Killer. Wow. <laughs> and people were like, he would have been like an eight-year-old boy when it happened. And then people were like, well, they would have put young. it past them. Would have put it past them. So you're alive. <laughs> well, that time that Ted Cruz shared porn on his Twitter. I think I do remember and then, this one. <laughs> and then yeah. his college roommate was like, oh, yeah, he was always jerking off. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh oh, he peed in the in the, in the pool. Have you peed in a pool? Maybe when I was younger. Yeah, like when I was five. Wow, only when you were five. <laughs> and when I was four and three. Not higher than five. Not that I remember. Wow, I still do it to this day. I just walk into public pools, just pee. You don't even have to walk in; just stand on the outside. No, that, I mean I it. have to walk into the complex. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. He has to be subtle. Okay, I, I dig under the fence. And then, um, you know, because the fences are high now. And um, I just walk in, 
I didn't even take my swimmers off. I just kind of stand at the edge and like thrust myself forward and just pee and just kind of let it dribble. Yeah, dribble down your leg. Leg yeah. into the, the more subtle side. than like the pee scene in Gulliver's Travels. Obviously, obviously, yeah. Gah. That's why I said it. I'm not putting out a house fire. Yeah, with Billy Connolly in there. <laughs> But what if you were? <laughs> See, well, I, I didn't laugh until you said Billy Connolly was in the house fire. Ah, <laughs> oh, help me! So, um, here's a, here's here's something I like to point out. What is? It's a dice. No, the badge, the pin that Eugene Levy's wearing throughout this whole entire movie. He I thought it was like a, a dental thing or something. Yeah, I want confirmation though from you. Considering he's uh, carrying around accessories of dental products throughout the film, I would imagine it's related to the brand. It could also but just be the Star of David. Who do, knows? Do we? It kind of looks like pizza. No, it looks like a face. Yeah. Is it his face? I don't know. Wouldn't surprise me. Would you? If you? If you were you, which you are, well, technically so you're the fifth iteration of yourself. Yes. Sixth. Well, technically sixth, I guess, because the fifth one would be. I mean, yes, yeah. Well, technically, you're an iteration of the original one, so technically you could be the fifth. You see, because the original one wasn't an iteration of anything; they were just the original. Yeah, but then the next one that came was called. Two. Are you fifty percent related to your previous one, or what? Um, barring any... it's it's a um ninety ninety four percent. Wait, hold on. If he is a clone, mm-hmm. right? Say he's the sixth clone, which we've said. Would he then be less and less related to his dad? I still object to the terminology. What? Oh, terminology. I thought you said the term analogy. Like you don't <laughs> like analogy as a term. <laughs> I do not like analogy. I object to it. <laughs> well, relation still the correct term. What would you say? I mean, I'm just seeing it as a yes-no thing. It's like, yes, you are related. Yeah, but the whole point is how how much... But we're talking scientifically. Like, if you're 100% genetically related to your father, you are your father. Okay, if we're talking genetically, then yeah. But, but you that's didn't what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but you didn't specifically say genetically in the Do I have thing. to say related? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you 100% When you bring it up spirit- out of nowhere, yes, you fucking do. No, I fucking don't. Do like, you, oh, you really what did... do you think I'm implying? Do you think I'm implying, are you 100% spiritually related to your father? No, are objectively, you 100%... objectively. <laughs> what do you mean? Is you that are... your dad? Are you related to this guy? Yes. Well, yeah, you're thinking, and everyone would think genetically. Why would they think genetically? Because that's how you're fucking related to your relatives. No, but you were talking about the, the, the percentages. Exactly. So if I'm saying percentage-wise, how much are you related to your relative? But you like, would think, it, it sounds oh, like probability. genetically. What do you mean probability? Like, oh, is there a chance I'm adopted or something? Like, what do you It think? might not be genetic. You might be how much that's you relate to That's still genetic. As in, like... Uh, what are you, you saying? That's still gen- wait. He's saying there's a probability you're saying that I'm I'm not like I'm adopted. That still means genetic, right? Like you're there's a fifty percent probability that you could be not related, meaning you're adopted, meaning genetically you're not related. But like you right? might you might relate. Right? That's you, that you, not, you, is that not might, what I mean? But you weren't asking about the probability. You were asking no, about you the result. No, you interpreted it. And, but it, either way, it still factors in to genetic relation. But what about emotional relation? Well, well, seventy oh, percent. That's a completely different story. <laughs> but you know what? That's what. Do you don't know what I mean? So even if you, Look, you I understand took it your... as probability, it still factors in to your understanding is genetic relation. Yeah, I understand now. You're talking about genetic relations, but I still. <laughs> the the initial wording it was just didn't. It was like, my confusing. initial reaction was. It's pretty you know, like, obvious what it means. No, no you're right. insane. When you're you say, alone "Are you this... related to your father?" No, yes. I say you yes. go, "Oh yes, because I am his son." Yes, because but, my mother but had he... his semen yes. inserted yes. in. DNA, that's DNA. What and are you I am, and about? Ryan, and Ryan, but, are you but you 100%? brought up the 100%, and I would say, yes, I am 100% sure I am related to because, this man. But you're not, because you're 50%, because you are not him. But I'm 100% sure. We're not that saying that all our fucking DNA is 100% that's you... identical. That's only true in identical twins. But what if it's only 49%? Isn't there still a difference between identical twins? It's, it's the, the, between fraternal and identical, there's a difference. But I think, I think identical... 
I think there's oh no wait I think there's like one little thing that's different. I mean I think it's a, I mean you still have different fingerprints. I, oh sorry yeah when you're identical you have the same blood type but fraternal I think can have different. Right see this is anyway have the same. That was, that's this a tang- movie that's doesn't a this movie doesn't even have twins. We should be talking about twins with Danny this DeVito. This is yeah, the little girls. The tw- there's two of them. Oh, they, sli- sli- oh face, yes. slim face and fat face. <laughs> they switch places. I think it was pretty obvious. You know who is a twin? Say, are you related to your father? Yes, I am. Or bard sex, like, you know... Your like initial you... question had the 100% percentage in it, right? Well, yes. Remember that. Yes. And that are you 100% point... related to your father? Yes. No, you're 50%, because half of you is your mum. I think I think but the question I am you would be asking... You are two... You are half... You are one person because I, Ryan, two I halves think of... Your wording is what you're saying, but I think what you really should be asking to get the answer that you're saying should be the answer is, uh, is your DNA 100% the same as your father's? In which case the answer would be no. But who speaks like that? Well, th- that's the question. That's answer. the answer you want. For People the, who want a clear question. answer speak like that. But that's not what the internet was saying in the first place. But the but, internet is wrong. But you're saying, you see, you you guys are you you guys are these people who are like we only ever speak in specific terms ever because right. that's how humans work. Apparently, we don't at all just speak in manners in which you're like, hey, are you 100 percent related? To first your of all, father? Ryan, you're talking about science, so you do have to be a bit specific. Second of all, exactly, we were only right. reacting to your initial wording of the question. We agree with you about the yeah, you're 50 percent related father, mother, whatever. Yes. But we we're real, we're literally arguing over wording and the fact that we were confused by the initial question. We were objectively confused by that. Therefore, we gave a but different answer. You're saying answer. It like it's the most confusing thing ever. No, you're just making a huge deal out of it when we're saying yes. Because we it's simply very were fucking simple. And because you're arguing like, well, you're stupid. You don't have because, common sense. Because you fucking don't have common sense. And we sense. think that you're blowing this super out of proportion. I think that this is the classic debate between you and I. Should you drop cats? No, you shouldn't drop cats because cats don't like it. That's I will giving remind cats you, fucking sentience I will remind again. you that my they argument are. is... They are. They will... aren't sentient. They don't know what the fuck life Life is, they just are alive. I will remind you that they my are contention... Sentient. They aren't sapiens. There's a difference. Fine. I will remind you that my contention was that I do not drop cats. Not that you shouldn't. No, you did argue that you shouldn't. I argued why I I don't. would argue that you shouldn't. But they... You can, though. That's the point. You just drop them and they just... You could drop people. It's not nice. But they are aware that you're dropping them but in that manner. you just said they aren't aware of life. What, cats? You just said they weren't aware of life. Yeah, that's why it's fine. Uh, you said people. I was responding to your people comment. Oh, I see. Yeah. See, see, you said one sentence, and I responded to that sentence. But well, you thought I was saying a response to four sentences ago. I thought you were see, saying a response now, to the overall conversation. What was that, sorry? I thought you were saying a response to the overall conversation. See, see, it's the age-old debate of, I think I have common sense in this regard, and you think and you are in this that regard. You, and we think that you're being stubborn. I am right about this. <laughs> That's right. You can drop fucking cats. And you can, stubborn. but you shouldn't. Why? Because it's not nice. I don't. What want do you, to you drop mean? It's not nice. Do you think the cat, when you drop it, then walks away, being like, "My, my, my, my manners have been tarnished in this regard. But, I was expecting a cordial visit okay, to my owner, well, and they the logic and be- they took me off of their lap and dropped me on the floor. I can never trust them again." Exactly. No. It's like you, if if you like, if you kick a dog. Or a cat. If you kick a cat, it's going to be less likely to come near you again. They Wrong! Learn. Wrong! I kicked your cat, and it likes me more! But like That's you... an actual fact, by the way. I it does When like Mark and I more. lived together, he had a he has his cat, he didn't put a bell or a collar or anything on it. I was walking down the hallway and I fucking launched it down the hallway because it was nighttime and I didn't see it. And that cat likes me now. It comes up to well, me. Well, that's different, Ryan. It was masochistic. Oh... <laughs> See, so you're talking, but you're talking about physical abuse. You see, that's the difference. You're talking about like if you if you murder, if you maim or anything. I'm talking about the typical thing I of a cat it... has feline reflexes that are there. So when you drop it, it lands on its feet. Yes. Right. Yes. It's like the age-old 
don't you ever play with your cats? You could argue, well, you shouldn't play with your cat because how do you know your cat likes it? You're interpreting it through your human senses, but you're not a cat. So how do you understand that? But you don't even own cats. So I know, but it's it? just the same argument about animals in general. This is literally, I think this, he's literally going through the same motions that Reese and I did. This... <laughs> Uh, my, look, my basic contention was, yeah, I guess it's okay, but I do not want to do it because anyway, of sentiments. Anyway, anyway, right? we are at yeah. the climactic scene of the movie. So, so are you yeah, fi- are you fifty percent related? Did to we your see cat the spice? Or? Did we get the Spice Girls line? I think we missed it. You son of a bitch! We're gonna miss the nuns too, aren't we? Well, I, I sorry, <laughs> sorry, I, I can't get over. Oh, there it is. Spice Girls, Spice Girls. <laughs> so, he does he, he should give him the quiz, but he doesn't even answer it. Oh wait, he does. So that he guesses that makes him scary spice. Yeah. He, yeah, wouldn't it be great if Sam Jackson said he was actually I posh? Mean, Sp- Scary Spice was your favourite one, right, Ryan? Well, yeah, but I would have really liked it if he... He's more of a posh Spice, and Eugene Levy's way more of a ginger Spice. Eugene's got, like, a bit of a baby ginger going on. Uh, I don't think he's a baby as much. He's a little bit too Ryan, level-headed. give him a lollipop, then we'll see. But he's a little bit too level-headed for baby Spice. But he's innocent, too. Well, they're all innocent. <laughs> maybe, except for maybe I don't know, posh. Scary, sp- scary and posh, they look like they've done stuff. <laughs> but in actual news, it was, it was, it was ginger scary and scary. Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, and that was like four days before we did the episode, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, look, I, I got to ask this question right here, right now. Do you wish that you could wear that leather jacket? That Sam's wearing? I wish I had it, yes. I've never had a leather jacket, so I would like one. I have one. It's not that cool, though. As his? Yeah, it's pretty cool, his. It's because he's got four earrings. I think I like a... I guess that does help. Maybe a darker, shinier one. You want a shinier one, do you? Maybe a little bit more, yeah. Really? A bit more like in Greece. Oh, you want a cool rider? Well, like the Thunderbirds kind one. Thunderbirds? The T-Birds, sorry, the T-Birds. <laughs> Thunderbirds are <laughs> go in their leather jackets. I'm such an FAB. FAB, FAB. <laughs> Mark's shaking his head, being like, guys, guys, I'm 50% related to my dad, by the way. Just shaking his head, that's what he's saying. But is that probability or genetically? Well, could be Emotionally. both. Emotionally. Spiritually. That's sad if it's emotionally. Spiritually. <laughs> He's fifty percent related to. That's so. that's on a plane I do not comprehend. Well, his dad could be agnostic. Well, he is atheist, so that's like they kind of. Yeah, they there. both start with A. Yeah, that's fifty percent. Where the so does animism? I don't know what that so is. So does uh, what was that word that you confused? Olo- uh, analogy, terminology. Yeah, you were against so the terminology. I'm against. Uh, I'm against ology. <laughs> I fifty percent believe in box. Sausage. <laughs> Doesn't really mean anything. That's three separate black out of the third references in a row from the same episode. So, Mark, you don't think it's okay to drop your cat? I wouldn't drop my cat. You have, though! Not on purpose. Yes, you have! I don't think it's okay, though. And I regret doing it. You're a fucking liar. You're such a liar. You're just being a contrarian right now, and I know That's it. That's because it's amusing. Well, if he was being contrarian, I'm... he'd say no to everything. Which case would be, ooh. He's been contrarian to this argument. Yeah, but he hasn't said no to absolutely no, everything. I haven't argued you once. Yeah, Ryan, we haven't argued at all. You're the only one <laughs> arguing. Ryan, we're not even here. <laughs> it just bothers me it's when you guys you. are like, you guys are like, oh, well, it wasn't obvious because, you know. Because it The wasn't. way humans speak <laughs> isn't obvious sometimes, you know, man? Exactly, like, it's not. when you say. I cannot emphasize when you that say, in that initial. How do you survive in Australia, Bartek? Like, when someone says, yeah, nah, does your brain, like, start fuming and your, <laughs> and your, like, steam comes out of your head because you're like, well, is it yes or is it no? I don't understand colloquialisms. The other day, I had to explain what a galah was. You've lived here, like, these are the things that are good. You're well, like, again, where's my a... common sense? That's common sense. You can drop a cat. Well, again, the Galal thing was me bringing up another Polish thing, but then I immediately guessed what you were talking a about. A bird? Hmm? The bird? Yeah. Do you know the other colloquial term for Galal? No, what is it? You're being a Galal. Like, you're being a joker. Oh, the, uh, again, you're... He's such a Galal, this guy. 
I thought you meant what's the other word for a galah? Th- that's that's what I. I said that's he, exactly how I interpreted what you said. I said the other colloquial term for galah. That you should really mean the other like the other, the way, other definition of the word galah, not colloquial term. It's for a colloquialism it. of Australia. No other country uses galah in that you way. Said, it's a colloquialism no, for the word. It's not that word. Did you not hear your word in colloquial term for a galah, not for the word galah? You said ah instead of the word. Well, it's implied. No. But we. I, th- I thought you were like asking what what other words we have for galah, and I'm thinking cockatoo. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's what I how Something I interpret like it as well. But you give us another <laughs> instance in which you use this word. That man, is... you mustn't survive in Australia. Ryan, man. you, 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 were... you no, go, Ryan. You... I survive. I've gone 26 years. I've survived. <laughs> no, but man. The, yours, yours... You, you look at me when I say typical Australian terms, and you're like, "What the fuck is that?" My 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 sensical brain can't figure it I'll out. Con- I will confess that there have been things that I didn't know, but this is completely different. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I think saying, "Are you 100 percent related to?" Your dad. I think the fact. That's not even an Australian I think the thing. fact that Mark no, and I are on the same. No, that's a logical thing. I think the fact that Mark and I have been on the same page speaks wonders. That's all. Yeah, I'm Mark's an idiot too. I, 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 I conceded in that. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're both idiots. I know. Yeah. Let's keep going. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm still no, we agree. We agree. We're both Ryan, idiots. We're yeah. so soz. You're, you're like 100% right about everything. You're oh, I'm never not wrong. <laughs> like everything you say is 100% right, and the world should like reorganize itself. To your logic. <laughs> no, it's just you. <laughs> You guys need to reorganize yourselves. There's someone listening to this going, yeah, no, I got it right. Yeah, someone, yeah, yeah, someone, one. You mean keyword one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's just, it's just like that's the thing with when it comes to when I get in the uh, these arguments on the podcast with you, Bartek. It's always like these these logical steps of what how a human naturally talks, and you're like, no, I need specificity in this. Like, I need the spe- the specific terms because. T- I guess humans speak like and, manuals. And I understand where what you're like saying. You must plug in to I the under- A socket now. I understand completely what you mean, but I think in the context of where we were confused, it called for a bit more specificity. But, but in the context as well, I brought it up as it's the thing that the internet has brought into light, and obviously the internet speaks in those kind of terms. But we I mean, not, memes we're fucking not... exist for one, and a meme is a reference to a reference to a reference of something or other. But we are having face-to-face conversations right now. Yes. So I'm not on the internet. I know oh. we say soz, and that's an internet thing, that's a, that's a joke. So. But you know how the internet culture I... affects the real-life culture... I do, and uh, that can be annoying at times, but... Yes. But I... Ah, look, is this so obvious? <laughs> to you, that... You know, they have that saying, it's like a quiz. The answer is obvious if you know the answer, you know? If you know the answer. <sighs> and that's the man. <laughs> does, does it blow your brain that the man had multiple meanings? It, it does? Yeah, man. Like that? Yeah. Like, the movie wasn't about the, the gendered individual who was identified as male. Mm. It was about the man, as in the authority figure. See, that's... You see, like, the movie here didn't need to, like, in the title, it didn't have to be called the man in brackets are referring to this specific logical term to the reference the man, not as in he is... But they do explain uh, it in the movie. Yeah, but you know when you looked at the title that that's what it was referring to. No, I thought it was a gay comedy. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be more specific, when I found out that this film does have police in it, the title did make more sense. Really? What did... <laughs> Because again, I only knew a few things about the film. I didn't know that there was police walking in. That's all. That's all I'm saying. When you see a movie called The Man, you're expecting it to be about the man. Well, again, Ryan, another colloquial that the term the man can refer to is like in a relationship. Exactly. What do you mean? Like you're the man well, in a relationship. Well, actually, you know what? I was di- I was dismissing Mark's whole gay thing off, but actually, it does apply to that. Like you know, when you have two guys, one of them's more like. Uh, the man. Dominant, one's more submissive. Like, the man can be the dominant one. Oh, the man of the relationship. Yeah. Oh. And, you know, the cover of the movie is, like, you know, the two one of them, them's clearly like, dominant. standing behind yeah. the other one, you know, like, <laughs> dominating him. Again, I was dismissing it, but now it's all making sense. <laughs> like, I did think this through. I didn't just <laughs> make that up on the spot. I'm like, yeah. I looked at the cover, and it's called The Man. I'm like, oh, okay, this is what this is. And because this is like the night you made us watch that terrible gay movie, Ben, ben and Arthur. Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just thinking about gayness, you know, in general. I'm really enjoying this episode. 
<laughs> Alrighty. Mark died while explaining that to us of a heart attack. We're now joined by Mark of Seven. He's, he's clutching his heart. Was it Mark of Seven or Seven of Mark? Seven of Mark, whatever. And he's dying. His last words are... Rosebud. Rosebud. I made that movie. <laughs> Rosebud. Rosebud. Um, yes. Thank you, Mark. Of... <laughs> Fuck. Uh, seven of Mark for joining us now to do your review and rating of the oh, movie you. The it's Man. It's good to be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to have you, man. Thank you. The Man. Hey, are you 50% related to your dad? Or? I'm 50% late related to the previous Mark. Oh, good. Wait, really? No. Uh, it was a bad cloning operation. Oh, I see. Then what's sense. the other 50%? The, um, the mistake. Cat. Cat. <laughs> Is that, like, genetically or probability-wise? Because I need the specific well, terminology probability. here. probability. There were lots of animals in the machine. <laughs> like, you know, like the fly? It was like, there was a cat in there, but there was also some flies. Wait, okay, Ryan, so Ryan, here's the on. thing. Here's there's, the a, thing. There's, a, there's an opportunity here. Yeah. If he's 50% related to the cat, he can give us a definitive answer on that debate. Please no, he can me. give us half an answer. Ah, and it only has a half chance of being right. Because he still has the uh, so like perspective of a human to be like, I don't like... Mm. Actually, it's not that. I only know half of everything. Well, here's the thing i got to ask, too. If there were other animals in the machine, does that even make you technically 50 of one and, and 25, 25 of the other? Like, could you have actually been, like, less human? Like, if, you're, if you say you just said there was flies, a cat, and a human, does that, in fact, not I mean it's 50-50, well, but you know, more a pre- like... A brief scan said it was 50-50. So one of them didn't count. And I guess the scan right. wouldn't be his half and, and And your rating? <laughs> of, of the cloning operation? Uh, two out of ten? And the man? I, I wasn't here for the man. That uh, was the other mark. Okay, five out of five. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. You want my review? I'll give it to you. Yes, tough guy. <clears throat> This was like a, f- a probability of a review, or like a Ryan, certainty of I a will review. 100, I, need... I will one hundred percent give you a review. Okay. Well, like, not, a review of this well, movie. Well, not a hundred percent for you. I'm going to give it some to Mark, some to the listening people. So, but it'll be equal. I need some more specifics on that because some's a very general term. There, I need like. That's like a probability term. Like, I need, t- like, a 100% term. But are you talking about, like, a mathematical sum? Like, you're going to do a sum <laughs> I, I was. in front of us? I or was. a spiritual sum. Like, S-U-M. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the sum of Rhymes us. Rhymes with cum. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said yes. <laughs> anyway, my review. I thought this film was very funny. Uh, I do think of its reputation similar to the way Cop Out is thought of. It is a film that... I think does everything completely well, completely fine. I wouldn't even say it goes to the extent of like cop out in subverting, you know, genre conventions and cliches. I think it just, you know, straight up does the buddy film well with, um, you know, someone who's more familiar with the industry, in this case, you know, criminal arms trading, um, and someone who's just an outsider who's been thrust into things. It's these are the ingredients, play it out. Not too many shocking swerves, but it's all done really well. This film is funny. It's, well, we did an episode and then we did a lot of debate in the episode. So I'll attribute that to the film because, I mean, that's what the title of the episode is. It brings up a lot of conversation and it has many different interpretations some of which will surprise you, which I guess is a shocking swerve and kind of goes against what I said before. But hey, life is just complicated sometimes. I give this film... It's a fraction. Black over white. Just like the poster. <laughs> Mark looks so confused Because Samuel Jackson's above Nah, you need to be more specific <laughs> Oh well, um, if I'd give this movie a rating and review Which I do Is it going to be a sassy rating? I liked it Like Big Kev would have said I'm excited This movie was fantastic Sensual and funny 
Eugene Levy and Samuel 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 Sam Jackson's chemistry together was phenomenal to the point in which you want to see them be in more movies, not necessarily as these characters, but just in more movies and TV shows and stuff together. I mean, it's still cool that these guys are still at it, still around, delivering Sam Jackson doing all the Avengers movies and all these other things, and you know, Eugene Levy's still doing all these comedies, he's got his show Shits Creek and like all that kind of stuff. And it's just great that, you know, these two legends got to be in this movie. Like, people you wouldn't think to be together being together. Chemistry on screen with a great little script to boot. If I have to give this movie a rating, I would give it a solid meh out of meh. 100%. It's 100%. Same as Mark's one. But is it like... Huh, is that like a probability? 100%? Or is a, that like a... A grade. Oh, not genetic? No, grade. Oh, okay. Are you sure, though? Because it was mine, so I, I think I know the answer. Well, it's like a quiz. Yeah, exactly. So, Bartek, hit us with what the interweb had to say. Oh, about and by movie. the way, I didn't read his review, but I think Roger Ebert gave it a 1.5 out of 4. So, naughty. <clears throat> anyway, let's go over to the YouTube comments. There are some very insightful ones, some personal ones, and some just, you know... Giving us objectives. Objective truths. Hmm. The first one of the comments is... <clears throat> this is very fucky video. Now, you see, they tried to say funny, but they did two H's instead of two N's. It could have been funky. But you know what? Lowercase H's do kind of look like N's. Just with, like, points at the top. So you could be forgiven for reading it as, This is very funny video. Hmm. But that's not it. But they also look like K's as well. So I thought maybe it's supposed to be fucky. I can't wait for the next episode <laughs> where you're on. And that's the voice you do for like the whole... For the entire episode. The whole episode, yeah. You're just going to... Right, you're going to start the episode by saying, oh, I killed him with a new one. No, I just choke him. <laughs> on air. Um, wait, the next episode or this one? No. Oh, next well, episode. Well, maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> the next <laughs> The next comment is, I hate damn fucking Zionists. What? <laughs> Well, he has the Hebrew tattoo, so maybe, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you made a connection out of uh, what I thought was just a random. Three more comments. <clears throat> the next one is, Good movie makes you hate FBI because they wouldn't hesitate to treat you that way. Need to put all those fuckers down. <laughs> yeah, that's what I learned too. The next one has a response. And the initial comment is simply funny with an exclamation mark and a smiley face that uses equals and the the close bracket, but not the Kirby one, the one with the three lines. Right. So, you mean a square bracket? Yeah, square yeah, bracket. Yeah, use the yeah. specific terms. I like you know. I actually didn't know the specific term to be honest. Oh uh, well, not an excuse. Um. Yeah, it's penguin. <clears throat> and the response is wow, eleven years comment still alive, bro. So it's nice that in the man comments, people are looking out for each other. Um, did, were they alive, though? There was no response, so, you know. Well, but at least he was checking. And the final comment is, Samuel L. Jackson, hilarious facial expressions in this movie is brilliant, especially when he made a hard turn in his Cadillac and Eugene swerved at Samuel like a kiss. And then six crying laugh emojis. That actually was pretty good. <laughs> Sam Jackson was not impressed. And now we come to the IMDb review that I've gathered. Oh, good. <clears throat> this IMDb review is titled... Let me just clean my nose. It is titled, If Levy is the man here, Goss must be the woman. <laughs> it is from the 12th of October 2007, and it does not give a rating. Good. Though I will say, I I think they liked the movie, but they don't quite focus on the movie. No, they're, I know what they're focusing on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like Midnight Run, but not oh. nearly as good. Oh. Thanks to very good casting of Jackson and Levy, however, it is an ami amiable enough action comedy. No major laughs, but quite watchable. Mediocre casting of these two roles would have sunk this movie beyond help, because the script doesn't have that much going for it. However, 
Casting Ferrer and Goss was a total blunder. Miguel is one of thousands of nepotists working in Hollywood, i.e. Mm. a talentless man, l- totally lacking in any charisma. His daddy is Jose Ferrer, the actor, yes. and his mother, the terrible singer Rosemary Clooney. Mm. Yes, that makes Miguel the cousin of George Clooney, yes. another bad nepotist actor, and as of recently, world saviour and liberal do-goodering flag waver. And then in brackets and quotes, I know how to solve the DAFA crisis, for I am George from the movies. Yep. George is Rosemary Clooney's nephew and son of broadcast journalist Nick Clooney. It's all in the, in brackets, Hollywood family. Goss plays a bad A asterisk asterisk criminal, which is preposterous casting. The effeminate features combined with those teeth as white as a polar bear's behind might remind you of someone, dot, 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 Goss? Does anyone remember that girl group Bros from the 80s? Actually, to be fair, it was a boy band, but everyone I know, including me, thought they were girls when they first saw their one-hit wondering video and heard the high-pitched whining that was supposed to be singing. Bros. It's the band Bros. Okay. In brackets... It was just Goss experiencing the pains of losing a particular brand of virginity losing. When Jackson <laughs> said <laughs> When Jackson said that Levy was his bitch, he must have confused him with Goss's character. <laughs> Next paragraph begins with a quote. When will I will I be famous? So Goss the little pop did <laughs> Why did you sing it like that? How would you... Um, what I like was that for some reason you used that Middle Eastern music that they had in the movie as your <laughs> sounding board. <laughs> I don't know how to sing hey. that. Yeah, like, how would you, how would you sing that? Uh, when I... Okay, when will I... Will I be famous? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he extends the, the yeah. use in famous. It's also spelt like famous. Yeah. Without an E at the end, but yeah. Anyway, um, so goes the little pop ditty Goss sang, and in brackets, or rather squeaked, for the screen. For the screen. <laughs> I was right, it was mouse. <laughs> You're right. Uh, for the screaming teeny boppers. Well, the answer to that is you will be famous again when you make more movies. You just need to convince more producers that you are star material. The world needs more female-looking movie heroes slash baddies. We just haven't got enough already. So what does Goss's casting in an action comedy bode for the future? Does this mean that Justin... And then he adds brackets E. It's like Justine Timberlake. will Will B play a heavy in 10 years? Chasing the likes of De Niro through the streets of Brooklyn? Most probably. Maybe Joey Fat One from NSYNC will play an ex-Marine in a PC drama by Reiner. Or maybe even... Dot, dot, dot. No, there is no even. That's as bad as it can get and will get. Hollywood, goodbye. It's been a fun 100 years, but now you're dead. I guess <laughs> I'll have to watch Japanese movies from now on. At least they make some effort. If you want to see my extensive Hollywood nepotism list, contact me by email. Or you can go to uh, rateyourmusic.com slash uh, tilde fedor8 and check out my TV and cinema 150 worst cases of nepotism list. So we're going to email him, right? <laughs> uh, he didn't. He didn't give us his email, (laughs) but we do know his rateyourmusic.com account. Well, thank you for that. Thank you, Bartek, for gathering the slime of the internet and Uh, real opinions, rhyming it up in my eyes. Uh, Mark. Yes. uh, Okay, enough of that. (laughs) Um, Yep, that was that. So this Mark agrees with me, though, about the, 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 the wording from earlier. Yes. Okay, so it's, so it's two versus two. I think what one confused of them me 
was when we started it, Mark at the beginning absolutely understood what I said before I had to clarify it, but then halfway through the episode decided that he didn't understand anymore, which was interesting. Was it because he's heard these uh, mm. internet debates? I don't know. I was no. here for it. No. We'll never know he died. He died to death. He it's did. Not, it's not, like we, have, it's it's not like we have a recording. So It's yeah. not like there's recording proof. So, uh, I guess we'll be back next episode. Well, next episode, well, who knows? It could I might be, be here. It could be like yesterday's Enterprise. We're, we're forever stuck. Um, they won't let me leave. <laughs> oh, he's going to keep this voice going forever. I will. Just to spite you. <laughs> I guess. What did I, what did I do? You kicked my cat, that's what you did! <laughs> well, no, it wasn't your cat. It was a different iteration you of know, you. I associate with that identity. Well, it was probably marked to the power of I've inherited time. the cat. Well, it's... Well, have you, though? Yes, it was in my will. Well, the previous one's will. Well, that hasn't been legalized yet. It doesn't take... It doesn't I, have an instant. Is seven of you know, Mark next of kin so. to... Yeah, well, assumptions aren't legalities, so... You're, you know, you're living other. in what someone once called... Told to me, a fallacy. Um, <laughs> I guess until next time, Seven of Mark, you will be alive. Yes. Um, <laughs> until next I time, listening people, you'll be alive as well. You can be we the new host. Next episode. <laughs> Bartek, a pleasure as always. It's I been guess. a pleasure. Until next time, listening people, remember we're on all the podcast platforming sites and on the Twitter and the Facebook. Share us around, converse with us, let us know if you're 50% related to your father. Until next time, remember to... Yeah.